Hi everyone and welcome to Campus Channel. I'm here with Grenoble École de Management and we're going to be talking about the MSc in International Human Resource Management in Digital Age. Here with us today we have Sabine Loria, the Head of Programme. Hello Sabine, how are you? Hello, I'm fine, thank you. And I'm here with Alexis Moisan, a student in this programme. How are you Alexis? Doing well, thank you. Okay, they're here, to enjoy, they're here to answer your questions, but first we're going to start with the pitch. Okay, Sabine, you know the rules. The rules is you've got one minute to present us this program. Okay, Sabine, it's your turn. Go. Okay, welcome. The MSc IHI program is specialized in HR. Uh, international HR management with a special focus on uh, the digital transformation in HR and its challenges. Thanks to this program, you will uh, acquire the skills and knowledge to work and to face these challenges. But more than an academic program, it's also a journey. You will work with international students coming from all, all over the world. You will uh, be trained by a pool of academics and professionals, all experts from the HR field. You will also be um, work with real companies. You will meet lots of companies. You will experiment new ways of working, but also new ways of le learning, like the live business case with TL companies. This program will make you grow. I'm looking forward to share with you for the next 40 minutes. Okay, that was right on the clock. Perfect. Thank you very much. Well done. We're going to start with the first question, and it is very simple, Sabine. What is international human resource management in the digital age? What do you call that? Well, um, this program will give the skills to the students to be good HR managers, but in, a space, in a, the international world, which means that they can work anywhere in the world in any companies. They will um, learn international knowledge in HR. It's not specific to French. It's not specific to French law. It's really to be able to work uh, in different uh, countries in HR. And with this special focus on uh, digital age, we say digital age because it's um, well, you know, the world is changing. Students uh, are facing uh, the new digital, the digitalization, and we want HR to be able to work with that and to change their, their well, to adapt their posture in front of the, this digitalization of the world. Okay, that's, that's very clear. How, how can I apply? I mean, if I don't have any work experience, can I still apply? What are the requirements? Well, um, any, any, anybody can uh, apply. Um, it can you can come from any field. Uh, the only thing that I look at is the motivation, the motivation to work in HR. But also, uh, it is much uh, better if you have worked or do an internship of at least one year, because. I consider that it is much more easier for the students to understand what they are taught um, when they have already uh, work experience. It's easier for them to understand the concept, but also to have uh, examples to apply their knowledge. Okay, I'm sure, Alexi, you can see my question coming. Do you, did you have any work experience before applying? I did have work experience. Um, I finished my undergraduate degree uh, three years ago and in that time I'd been working for an international uh, nonprofit organization mostly in finance but then increasingly in HR which is what brought me towards the program uh, at Gem. Okay so did you knew what you wanted to do before applying or did you develop the, how did you develop that project of working in HR I mean starting from finance it's very unusual. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Um, what when I started with my organization, um, I was really just doing administration of HR, you know, uh, receiving applications uh, for, 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 for a new, new posting in our organization um, and uh, making sure that we were compliant with the, the variety of laws and regulations around HR in America. Um, but as I uh, increasingly got involved, I realized 
there was a large part of it, which is what drew me to finance, which is the ability to help people um, uh, do better I I in their work. In finance, it's all about uh, giving people the strategic information that they need to make the right decisions. HR is exactly the same. It's how can I help you do, do better in your role? Uh, and that really appealed to me. Okay, and Sabine, would you say that you have to have a clear idea of your future career before applying? Or is it just like it was good for Alexi, but not every student needs to know what they want to do with their life before applying to this MSc? Well, this MSc is very specialized. So you will learn HR, HR, um, HR courses only, uh, which means that even for the courses that are HR budgeting, budget and accounting, it will be applied in HR. But it is not necessary for the students to know exactly what they want to do what they want to do in the, the HR field. That means that uh, you can work for recruitment, you can be a generalist, you can be a consultant in HR, and it can also be uh, for managing people because when you manage people, uh, it's we, we are used to say that uh, the manager is the first HR. So even if students don't want to, or may want, want to move in a managing position, well, the, the, what they will learn in the program would be very, very useful. You, you mentioned the, the motivation in order to apply, and that's what you're looking the most in a student. And uh, you also mentioned three short essays in order to integrate your program. And uh, can you be more specific about these three short essays? Like, am I limited when it comes to words? What exactly do you expect me to say in those three short essays? What is very important for me in the essays it, is to see the motivation, why they have chosen um, this program, what they have done before. That's why the work experience is important, but also any extra activity extra, um, like, uh, I don't know, uh, being volunteer or uh, being special, uh, working in a school uh, sport association or any other things which could be, which could be useful for me to know um, if this person, if this candidate is uh, well fit to the program. So the motivation is very important, but also I would say the capacity to be open-minded uh, open to different people because in this program you will they will meet lots of different people lots of different um, culture so the the way they, they are used to work or to meet are uh, able to meet new people is very important okay, you, you mentioned different people like different cultures how many students mm -hmm. do you admit and what is the international mix well, um, the international um, this year we have uh, well last year the, the year of uh, Alexi we had twenty nine different students um, twenty nine international students plus part time students because we also merge part time students in the program they are French so we had thirteen different nationalities in okay. the same class and when is it for best for? 30 for no for 42 students okay uh, and alexi do you have a, uh, what is your nationality uh, i was born in france but i've lived in the united states for most of my life okay i don't work for the police i was just wondering and asking nicely <laughs> and peacefully just so you know all right um and like how many different nationalities have you met did you make friends with like uh different people different like nationality as well Oh yeah, I mean, we had folks from from five different continents uh, in our masters, and uh, uh, at least for our year, as a very uh, tightly knit group, uh, we were constantly you know, having parties together and, and meeting one another, and just talking about HR together, which was which was kind of amusing. You'd think we would be done with it after our studies, but uh, we would be at, at, at soirees and still talking about HR. Okay, and well. Uh, Sabine mentioned extra activities before applying. I mean, now m mainly you talk about HR, but maybe before you had different subjects. And in order to apply to this MSc, what did you mention uh, that uh, did uh, appear, that was appealing for uh, Grenoble Public Color Management in order to accept you? Mm -hmm. Well, I think I have a somewhat different background from a lot of students because I work in the nonprofit uh, field, whereas a lot of uh, you know, Gem is a, a business school, and so there's a lot of folks in the private sector. Um, and I think you 
can bring a different um, mindset to things when you're not um, uh, always driven by shareholders and profits. And uh, I think that's another way that you can add diversity to the program. Uh, and so I think I think that helps stand out. But outside of work, you know, I was also uh, uh, well traveled and had a lot of experience with different cultures. Um, and so. And one of my biggest motivations was to enter a program that wasn't so focused on the U.S., which most HR programs are in the United States. So I think that may have been another standout point. And, and among the students you've met, do they have like very like different backgrounds from yours that you could maybe share with oh, yeah. us so that like someone who is like completely different from you know that he can actually uh, be admitted to this program mm -hmm. as well? Now, among the friends I've made, there was someone who uh, was an IT manager in India before they came here. Another one had spent her entire career doing compensation work in California um, before coming to, to become an HR generalist. Someone else had zero HR experience, had just finished their undergraduate degree, but had a passion for people. Another friend came from the Midwest United States uh, and had only worked in frontline employee jobs. It was really motivated to help people. Um, in the in the service industry. So it was a very diverse group of people in terms of their backgrounds. Okay, and was there any interview for you when you applied? Because I can see that uh, the interview is not compulsory. And I was wondering how you can recruit students in HR, in the HR industry without interviewing them. And what made you or made you not eligible to this interview? Yeah, um, I, I ended up being interviewed um, um, by a professor at JAM. Uh, but it was actually before I finished my application, so I really liked this style because it was less of an it was less of a, a assessment of me and more of a let's get to know each other, um, and that really convinced me uh, about Gem was, was that interview. So I highly encourage students who are considering it to just reach out and see if they can talk to somebody because it it made me realize that Gem was was exactly the right fit for me. Okay, thank you for for your complete answer, Alexi. Every school has a stereotype, but we're going to dig a little bit closer to the truth and see what lies behind those cliches. All right, so it's cliche time. Um, I'm going to start with you, Sabine. What are the cliches that a student, the stereotype that a student can meet and counter before applying to this MSc? And which one do you want to talk about? Okay, um, I would like to be more preci precise on the specific cliche, which is um, MSCI HRM in the digital age. That's something that I always tell to my uh, to the applicants is that it they won't learn how to digitally g digitalize. Uh, the HR that means that uh, for me it's very important to keep human. In the in the process, and to be yeah. human centered, which means that uh, they will learn uh, the new tools. They will learn how the digital transformation can impact their jobs. But they will also learn what kind of new posture or attitude they must have. For example, we have a course which is called uh, HR as a coach because I consider that's very important for the HR to be able to to be the coach of their employees. All is right. it clear? It's very clear. It's very clear. I was listening to what you were saying and I was uh, wondering what Alexi would say about the his cliche before he entered the school. Sure. I think my cliche has uh, is also about the HR field in general, uh, and it was broken for me in our very first class. Um, you have this idea that HR is about administration; it's about taking care of the payroll or you know the benefits and all of these things. And one of the first things they told us is that almost all of those jobs are going to disappear in the next ten years. And what HR is really going to become is about strategy. It's about people. It's about how can you help folks uh, get ahead. How can you make organizations stronger? It's a much more important role than even I thought as somebody who is interested in HR. Um, uh, and it's not going to be the, the HR of the past. All right. So HR is uh, going to be becoming more strategic. It's all about human. Sabine, you mentioned like different uh, modules that might that are in your course sorry in your in this master but i want can you be more specific what makes this msc in human resources different from other program with almost the same name um what 
The difference is that it is international. They, they will work with, uh, it's something that the students always say at the end of the program, it's very, very international. But moreover, um, it's uh, because it's practice. You will, uh, well, I, I say you, but the students um, acquire and follow the, the courses, but in parallel, they experiment what they learn in the class. For example, we have what we call the live business cases, which are real companies which propose real HR issues. And the student will have six, six months to work in group on these specific uh, HR issues. Another thing which is very important for me is that they will discover and experiment what we call teal management or we can say uh, people-centered management or self-management and to give you an example from the very start of the the program we put the students in this uh, situation to decide on their own and to apply self-management to create groups for the life business cases Okay, what was the live business case about last year? We had six different companies who came in to present uh, their very concrete cases. Um, um, and uh, they range from wealth management companies to uh, Ubisoft, the, the famous video company, um, uh, small organizations, large organizations. Um, and they came to us with issues of self-management, like Sabine was talking about, um, a, an innovative exercise where employees could set their own wages and how that could work for the organization to issues of diversity, equity, and inclusion, uh, like LGBTQ uh, uh, employees in the workplace and how best to support them. Uh, what was great about how Sabine uh, and the team approached it is that we were able to self-identify uh, based on our interests and form groups that were really cohesive around where we were passionate, what experiences we wanted to have. Uh, I can't speak for everybody, but I had an amazing experience in mind. Uh, and, uh, that was definitely the biggest selling point of, uh, of my master's experience. Is there any other like particular modules such as live business case that you've identified during your, your courses? Mm -hmm. I'm thinking, I think for, HR is... sorry, I'm thinking, for example, I have like, I don't know, there's a course called gamification and creation of a serious game for HR. And I was wondering for what, what it was, for example, like it seems, it sounds very specific, like live business case and other courses like that? Yeah, um, I was very yeah, excited yeah. about gamification. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, I didn't get yeah. to take the module uh, this year uh, because my I was still working uh, while uh, at GEM, so I had to delay it to next year. But I will say that the, the gamification runs throughout the program. Um, this idea of incorporating um, play and creative uh, uh, interactions between em employers has come up multiple times. And from what I heard of the gamification class, it was very compelling. Okay, maybe Sabine, you want to complete his answers? Yes. Um, this year, the, the gamification seminar was uh, with, uh, in collaboration with uh, ILO, International Labor Organization. Their, their um, issue that they propose is that um, how to create engagement and the policy for the, for the employees about um, safety and uh, uh, safety in the organization. So they, they contacted us uh, to create games, serious game, in order to train the employees uh, to be able to, to talk about the safety um, policies and moreover regarding the COVID situation because it was uh, uh, in, uh, in this, uh, during the lockdown that we, we, we had this uh, seminar. So the students created six games, six serious game, which will be used but by ILO in order to train their employees. All right. Speaking of safety, how have you adapted your courses to the current situation? Um, you mean during the lockdown? Well, I mean now, for example, during the lockdown as ah, well, but now. I guess more now than during the lockdown. Okay. Okay, so now we, we apply all the, the safety rules that uh, are uh, given by the Ministry of uh, Health 
of the of France and also the Ministry of Education, uh, which means that we the mask we must wear the mask when we are in the school. We must keep a distance of uh, one and a half meter between uh, two two person. We don't gather people in a room. Um, well, we must respect the capacity of fifty percent of a room. And we also uh, um, practice what we call high flex uh, teaching, which is we have a part of students in the classroom and the others are uh, attending the course online for, so, because they cannot attend the course for any reason. All right, mm -hmm. so there is no reason to worry. And would I still be able to go abroad or not study abroad? Yeah, it depends. Depends on the the region of the countries, but yes, we 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 follow the rules of the of the government. Okay, perfect. I was because I have a question from a student called Juan, and his question mm -hmm. is: Where is the next study trip? Which companies are we going to visit? Okay, the we are used to go uh, to, on study trip in Geneva to meet ILO because we are used. To, to work with them. And I think it is very, very important for the students um, to know what ILO does and how it can impact their job as HR managers, because ILO is Inter International Labor Organization, which is the organization which built uh, the main laws on labor law uh, in the world. So that's important for me that the students know how it works and how it can be uh, in ca it can impact their jobs. Last year we visited also um, uh, <laughs> excuse me um, the OMC UNICEF. Uh, yes UNICEF thank you Alexi <laughs> and the World Organization uh, of Trade and uh, UNICEF was very interesting for the students also because it has a direct impact on their on their job because uh, when you are an HR manager in a company and you uh, you must be aware of the rules and not and to be aware also not to hire children or mother or any uh, family issues that you must face face okay alexi can you so tell us year, i hope we will do the same okay alexi can you tell us more about like this study trip and what it brought to you and like how it helped you develop as a human? Absolutely. Um, I was particularly excited for the study trip because this this was my field, the humanitarian sector uh, with organizations like UNICEF and, and the ILO. Uh, I thought what was particularly compelling was to get an inside look on how these very complex organizations with thousands and thousands of employees uh, manage themselves and, and how they uh, they face and are very, uh, UNICEF in particular was very open and honest with the challenges that they've had um, from uh, far ranging issues of harassment of, of employees in the workplace to, to, to diversity and inclusion. Um, and they were very open to talking with us, like how, how can the HR leaders of tomorrow solve these problems and make this better? And that was, a, that was pretty inspiring uh, for, for us as a group. Okay, so as you say, Sabine, it's not only about the courses, it's also about like developing as a human being. And I was wondering, how do you teach human skills? Um, well, it is taught in different courses, like uh, I told you, um, HR as a coach, when you, where you learn how to ask questions, how to understand questions, and maybe how to make people discover or find their own answers. So this is these are kind of skills that are taught uh, within the courses. The students will develop also lots of um, behavioral skills like uh, recruitment, how to behave like uh, when you recruit. They also, um, uh, they do interviews within the classes, but also they make interviews with other programs in order to be to be with new students who don't know the HR skills that are required. And um, the students, well, they will develop um, the, these specific skills in different courses. And we also help them to work together because 
Lots of courses are made around group works and in the future in companies we are used to work in groups and it's not that easy to work in groups, especially with, when you have different cultures and different uh, international students. That's why we try to make them uh, understand how they, they react in front of somebody who is from a different culture, to better understand their own motivation working in group and to better understand the motivations of, on the other people and inter, um, on the, of the other uh, students in order to make the best of their group work. Okay, does this program require a thesis or a dissertation? Yes, the second year uh, is dedicated to what we call the final management project. The students need to choose an HR issue, an HR question which is not uh, common, and they, they have to work on this, uh, on this question. They can, be, they can also um, link their final management project to an internship, which is what we call a professional track, which means that they work and at the same time they work on, this, um, on the, the issue that is proposed by the company. Okay, what was, uh, are you there already, um, Alexi? I mean, do you, have you found your HR uh, issue so that you can give an answer to it? Mm -hmm. uh, we're just starting the, the project proposal phase right now, but I have launched into my question, uh, which is about the uh, uh, diversity and inclusion in the humanitarian field and how uh, double standards exist between an organization oriented towards social justice, um, but one that is not taking care of its most vulnerable employees. And so how do you identify strategies to, um, to bridge that gap? Uh, between the mission that the organization is trying to achieve uh, and, and the support that the employees need. And has the school helped you in finding like the, this question like uh, and on what you want to work or how did you find out on yourself? Sure. I think there's, there's two ways. One, uh, you're assigned an advisor from the program, uh, someone that you really connected with over the course of the year. In my case, it was our diversity professor who had a lot of field experience with the United Nations tackling questions exactly like this. So every time we meet, we talk through these ideas that I have, she, she immediately knows either someone I can talk to or, 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 or some avenue for research that I can explore. Um, the, the second, um, Part of this is the research skills that you're taught. Um, I think it's a hugely important part of the master's is that we learn how to research, how to go deeper and, and identify the big questions that need to be answered uh, and how to identify the gap in the knowledge. The FMP isn't about repeating what someone else has already done. It's about figuring out a question no one else has answered and, and trying to give a, a new answer to it. All right, well, good luck with that. And thank you for, for trying and, and doing that because we need it. Um, I believe that a picture spoke more, speaks more through it than a thousand words, and that's what we're going to discover with Who Am I? Okay, so we're gonna have three pictures that I'm gonna show you. Those three pictures represent three different personalities, three different, um, three different famous characters normally, and uh, you will tell me which one is according to you the best one to represent your masters and your school okay so we have here are the three the three people have selected for you mm -hmm. the first one is Wally I'm sure you've heard about him it's like a famous Disney character movie if you don't know him you can ask me about him the second one is Jeff Bezos he's the the Amazon CEO and the last one is uh, Miranda Priestley and she is she's in the Devil Wears Prada and she's the big boss in the Devil Wears Prada so I was wondering which one. It's not an easy one, I've got to admit, but uh, I'm sure you will do well. So who wants to start and who, which one do you want to pick? Please don't pick the same. Hmm. Alexi, you want to start because I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as much as I want to choose Miranda Presley because I think she's an amazing character, <laughs> um, <laughs> I hope our HR experience isn't like, like working with her. Um, I think Wally is the one that I would choose. Um, I think uh, uh, it's the same uh, way that we are used to thinking about HR, 
um, which is a little dirty. You know, it, it's something that people only want to go to if they have a problem. Uh, employees tend to not have had great experiences with HR. But we realize uh, over the course of the program just how important um, it can be uh, to improving the, the health of the world as Wally was or, or the organizations as we are. Um, and that we can really change the, the way people think about uh, HR and the way that they interact with, uh, with the organizations. So maybe that's a bit of a stretch, but I've always had a soft place for Wally in my heart. <laughs> Good, I'm happy. Um, Sabine, did you get more inspired? No, n not very much because um, I don't know which of these uh, three uh, pictures is the closest to a program which is uh, quite different from what we are used to to, to find in HR program. Um, and uh, the two persons seem very uh, classical. I, I don't know really much uh, of them, but uh, and that's why I would have preferred the Disney picture because uh, in this program you will find um, usual uh, courses uh, or different fields that you will always find in HR, but there is always something which is uh, different from what we want to teach to, in HR. That's, what I mean is that um, I want to have a student who learn uh, for the future. I mean that uh, I want them to be able to change the world and to implement new ways of working in companies, to be different HR, not HR who are, uh, who are just administrators of process and rules and stay in their, in their ivory tower. I want people who are able to, to be close to people to help them to make the gap between the company, the CEO and the employees and not just follow the CEO uh, orientation or company's uh, orientation and, um, and to be able also to implement new ways of working like uh, what I told you at the beginning, till management. Okay, thank you very much. I'm going to tell you why I picked those characters. Wally was because he's a kind-hearted robot. So it's a robot with actually a heart and you can feel and oh. you can feel sympathy for him. And <laughs> since it was like resource management in digital age, it was like the link between the two of, the, uh, of those like human resources, digital age, they don't, seem to, they don't seem to come along, but yet they do and they do in Wally as well, for example. Uh, that was uh, one of the reasons why I picked him. Uh, Jeff Bezos, he is not very famous for his, his like HR methods for sure. However, he is very, um, I would say, he's about business and strategy. And I thought it could be bring maybe that side of him to th that master that you have. And the mm -hmm. last one, Miranda Priestley, she as uh, Jeff Bezos isn't that much nice, but in the end, she's got kind of a, she's kind hearted and very demanding. And I think that this masters is very demanding in order to achieve it. So that was that's why I picked those. Thank you for playing the game. And uh, I'm gonna ask you a question, um, more like being more specific about the jobs and how long on average will I have to look for a job in France before finding one with this masters? Well, uh, it depends. Um, it's around two months uh, but it can go up to six months to find a job. But uh, what I, um, what I uh, um, advise to the students is to find an internship, first of all. Moreover, if you are not European, it's easier to start with an internship because very often after the internship, you, you can find a job and you can be recruited. But if you want to stay in France, if you go abroad, uh, it can be easier maybe to find a job if you go back to China, for example. Okay, thank you for that. Um, and uh, Grenoble does not come across as an international city. Why should I choose to study international eye chair there? Well, Grenoble, uh, <laughs> in Grenoble you have lots of international students, lots of international uh, employees, because it's uh, it's a it's a com it's a city where you have uh, Hewlett Packard, where where you have um, 
lots of international companies uh, and it's also very famous for its um, digital uh, aspects. Lots of companies or organizations which are on research and new, uh, new energy. So uh, you will find lots of international people uh, in, uh, in Grenoble. So I can work in an international company if I get your master? Oh yes, oh yes. Alexi, maybe sure. you can tell us more about it. Why are you now, for example? <laughs> sure. Uh, I was in the unusual position of coming into the, uh, the master's with a job uh, at a humanitarian organization called Pivot that works in rural Madagascar. And I continued working with this organization throughout the master's. And after I finished the coursework, I was promoted to, to HR manager um, to take on the, the challenges uh, in particular of managing entirely virtually from halfway across the globe, the, the, the connections between our, our US-based team um, of, of 10 people and the 200 folks who are, who are based in Madagascar, where since March, uh, you can't fly into the country. Um, and so there's been a, a lot of really interesting challenges um, in there. And the international part of the HR management project is huge. I work with folks from a dozen different nationalities um, uh, with very different management styles and, 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 and things that they're used to in their home countries. Um, so that's been a, a big part of what I've gained from the masters in my work. And has Grenoble École de, Man Grenoble École de Management helped you in order to like, talk to all the different nationalities as well? and be able to like get along with them because I, I guess I suppose Absolutely. It's, it, it's very different for example like to recruit uh, in an Indian country or in a French country or in an American country yeah I actually think one of the most interesting class discussions we had was about exactly that topic where everyone went around and was talking about their recruitment experiences and some folks had been had only ever had job interviews where there were 300 people in the line going one by one to spend two minutes talking to a recruiter all day. Um, and I had never had an experience like that before. And realizing that candidates are coming from these different backgrounds um, opened my eyes to be much more accommodating uh, of things. I think there's a, a tendency in HR to dismiss people uh, off of like a simple mistake or a misunderstanding. And I think that can really do a disservice to your organization um, because a lot of those times it's just something that you didn't understand. Um, not necessarily something that means that they can't do the job really well. I think the opening of the, the cultural understanding was, was really important. I have just one last question for you, Sabine, before we go to extra time. The question is, am I able to get a job while studying for this master's degree if for students who are worried about the living cost? Can you repeat the question? Am I able to get a job while studying for this master's? In case of students are like, some students are worried about the leaving cost. Okay, so uh, the so question is, are they I, able can to... I, yeah, can I attend the courses and work at the same time? Ah, at the same time. Well, no, it's very difficult. It's very difficult to work at the same time. Um, Alexi had tried to do it, but it was sometimes very difficult. Um, you must be aware that the program is very, has very, very um, lots of work, homework, courses. There are lots of group works to do. So it's quite difficult to have a, a job at the same time. Okay, thank you for your answer. It's, I believe it's time to wrap up any loose hands. It's time for extra time. We have a minute, two minutes left in order to make sure that we haven't missed anything about this program, about your school. Um, Alexi, do you want to close this live and have the last words, please? Absolutely. I think one of the, one of the things I was most worried about when I was deciding to invest in a master's degree was how much am I actually going to get out of this? Are we going to talk about a lot of theory and then I'm going to go into the workforce? And it's not going to really apply to the work that I'm doing. And uh, as hard as it was, I was in a unique position of, of working for my organization while doing the master's coursework. And I was constantly in the situation that we had class in the morning talking about an HR subject on recruitment or diversity or what have you. And then in the afternoon, I go to work and we're talking about the exact same subject at work. 
And all of a sudden, I'm here thinking, I just talked about this. I, I, I know what we need to do. Um, that empowerment, uh, bringing it into the workplace, was more than I could have asked for from any master's program. Uh, and so I, I can't recommend enough. And it's been noticed by other people in my organization. They said the, the before and after from the master's program has really made you into a confident leader uh, in the HR field. And honestly, I think that's the whole point of doing a master's degree in the first place. All right, thank you very much. If you want to apply to Grenoble Ecole de Management, you know what to do. I hope you had fun watching this live and I hope to see you soon on Campus Channel. Thank you for watching. Thank you for coming, Alexi, and thank you for coming, Sabine. Thank you. Thank you.